welcome. This is Lisa Jones, and you are listening to the Exploring Death Podcast. Hi, it's Lisa Jones with the Exploring Death Podcast, and today I have with me Rich Ralston. Rich and I met when I first came to the island three years ago, and he is an amazing psychic medium as well as, um, gosh, just extraordinary energetic person all the way around and the stories that he's going to talk to us about today is going to blow your mind so welcome rich thank you <laughs> I'm I'm, excited to be here. well i'm excited to have you here on the show i actually had you speak to the ians group here in maui i think it was last june and uh i don't know why but it, now is the time for you to be on the exploring death podcast and i'm so excited because i think you have some new stories since last then to to tell us about, but first tell the listeners, how did you get started in this amazing uh, vocation that you've been pursuing for the last several years? Well, I really started uh, when my father-in-law died and it was my very beginning with the psychic experience. He would come and knock on our door at night and do all kinds of paranormal activities. And it prompted my wife and I to investigate the paranormal. And then I realized I had all these gifts and I was able to communicate with him. And then he started teaching me about the afterlife. And then uh, a few years later, my mother died and she would come to me and I, she would teach me about the afterlife. And then when my father was dying, I was in the hospital and I realized that I had the ability to cross souls over. I was actually able to go with them to the other side and see what was going on. So it was, it was like, uh, this whole thing's been a learning experience for me. I didn't really learn this out of a textbook. It was experiencing it. Absolutely. Well, I'm curious, before you go on, I'm just curious, before that, did you have a belief in the afterlife or, you know, were you total skeptical or what was your well, belief was before? A, I was an evangelist. I was a born again Christian. I didn't believe in the afterlife. I believed in heaven and hell and all that stuff. So I went through a paradigm shift from religious belief to the paranormal metaphysical understanding. And I wrote my first book about it because I, I took trips like I was in India and I was healing people and I was having all these incredible experiences laying hands on people healing them. And I was asking how is this possible? You know, I was, I was questioning everything that I was ever taught. And then I finally got back to who God really was and the source of everything, it's all unconditional love. So I kind of gravitated out of the religious thing into the metaphysical thing and realized that there was much more to learn than what organized religion could offer someone. It was a stepping stone to get where I am now. Right. And I tell a lot of people, well, you're, you're at where you should be because you, you have things to learn. So it's, it's, it's not bad. It's just one of those learning processes our souls go through. So now I'm at a place where I have had so many experiences that I still learn. We all keep learning. Exactly. So it's, uh, that's why I love to go to your meetings and listen to people with their experiences because everybody's a little different. They all have their little experiences, but it's all basically the same when it really boils down to it. But um, my mother would come to me when she would show me and teach me because I'm clairvoyant and I could see things. And then my, my father, he was quite an interesting character. And I, and I learned about dealing with karma and clearing karma and dealing with you know your family your soul i learned about soul groups we're all involved with a group of souls before we come here and we pretty much have a blueprint of what our souls want to experience and they're all different so we don't judge other people by what they do we try to understand what they're experiencing in their lifetime because everybody's at a different stage of development with their soul that's why we need to be tolerant of other people, what they believe, because they're, they're experiencing something 
Well, maybe we've already learned that and we already know that, but it's not that important. We let them experience it and understand it for themselves. So what, wow. And some people have a hard time with me because I, I can literally cross over and go to the other side if I want to, and I have many times. And in my book, I talk about my near-death experience. And I had one when I was, I had a gallbladder attack and I'm laying on the floor in my living room and I thought I was gonna die. So I went to the hospital and I left my body. And I went up to my Hawaiian soul group because I've been, I've had three past lives in Hawaii. So here I'm in the, in the cover of my book, I have a picture of a vortex with a beach with a lion. That's where I went. I'm standing there hugging all these Hawaiian people that knew me, saying, why don't you stay? I go, I, wait a minute, I, I have a family. I, I'm not ready to, I don't want to leave yet. I mean, I, it's really nice being with you, but, you know, I've got things I want to do here on Earth. So... I came back into the body and went to the hospital, had an operation, and I had several hours before I would have died. The surgeon was able to correct everything. Wow. Well, so did you, is that how, what brought you to Hawaii or, or what brought you to Hawaii? Well, I'd been vacationing here for 10 years before I moved here. And every time I came, I spent two weeks here. And every time I would come, I would do metaphysical. I would heal people and sit on the beach and communicate with the dolphins or whales and things like that. And um, I was clearing souls in Idaho, where I came from. And I was working with the Native American soul group because I had past life as, as a Hopi Indian. So I would go into places like suburbs that were haunted. People would call me up and say, we can't sleep in our house. We've got these people running through in the middle of the night. I'd go in and say, okay. I sit down with a chief, an Indian chief or something, and say, "Okay, you guys, it's time to go back to your family and souls." And I would cross them over. Well, I didn't realize that I had Polynesian connections with ancestors. So every time I would come over here, I would have a stronger draw to come here. So when I moved here, the first I wasn't here more than a couple of weeks when I had soul groups coming to me that were Hawaiian, asking me to help them understand why they were still here. They had died, but they hadn't crossed over. So for the following six years, I spent working day, and I mean, a number of days every week at least, and evening, just crossing souls over. So I started out just doing Polynesian souls, King Kamehameha's group, and you know, groups like that were, and as I did it, I gained more understanding as to what they went through and how, what they experienced. Ask more questions, asking questions, asking questions. So I finally got hundreds of stories and put them together into a book. What's the name of the book? And then I'm curious as to why they didn't cross over. You know, what's... Okay. Well, the book's called Afterlife in Hawaii. It's in Barnes and Noble right now under Hawaiiana. And you can go to Amazon and get it too, but... Um, the reason why they don't cross, there's several reasons. Number one is what your consciousness is today, what your belief system is today, what you carry with you when you die. For example, if you're very religious and you're afraid to go to hell and you're afraid to die and you'll be, you'll be suspended uh, after you die in what we call the fourth dimension, which is kind of a transition period of the dimension we're in the third now and you'll be afraid to, to go anywhere you'll just kind of freeze yourself into the state of i'm afraid to go i have a story about uh souls that were afraid they were going to go to purgatory and they were up in kula hospital suspended out there and i went up there one day and I explained to them that the catholic church has changed their their whole thought about purgatory it doesn't exist anymore and they said what we're afraid we're going to go to purgatory. And I said, no, you've created your own purgatory. You see all these beautiful angels around you? They want to help you go back to your family. So it was like, you're, they, it was like in, they were in disbelief at first. But I said, listen, you remember, we carry on our consciousness. 
So I've crossed over many religious groups that are still holding on to their religious beliefs. And um, they couldn't understand why um, Jesus didn't come and take them with him. And I said, well, I can help you find Jesus, you know, but it's not what you expected, that's all. <laughs> Right. So I, I love that because it's truly like we are creating our heaven and hell here on earth with our own conscious thoughts. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. And then that carries over into once we pass to the next realm, then we're still carrying that consciousness level, which then dictates what we'll experience. Wow. And when we get to our soul group, now our souls have agreed to gather together in a group. Okay. And they're mostly like-minded souls. They kind of have an ambition of we want to achieve certain things. We can hold on to those beliefs in the afterlife if we choose to. But we, we have the opportunity to evaluate and reconsider what we've experienced. Because we've had many lifetimes. This isn't the only lifetime. This is an experience for our soul. So now there's another reason why souls don't cross over. We call it soul shock. Now, uh, this occurred in many of the battles that were fought on the island. For an example, I was up at Eel Valley, I'm standing on the bridge, and this warrior soul comes to me and taps me on the shoulder and says, could you assist us? We, you know, we know that you're from the island in past lives, can you assist us? I said, okay. So we went down into a trail, which is no longer there because of the flood we had. But there was about a thousand souls lined up down along the river there. And they were still fighting the other group of Kamehameha's group. They were still in this consciousness of, they couldn't understand that they were dead. Because somebody ran a spear through them, and all of a sudden they're laying on the, in, the, in the creek bleeding to death. They just couldn't fathom the idea that they were dead. And a lot of people are getting car accidents airplane accident. They're in soul shock. And I have a lot of wandering souls come to me off the highway. And they walk into my house and they don't know where they are. And uh, it's very frustrating for them because they, they, have, they don't understand they're even dead. So you have to explain to them that they died. They're not in a physical body anymore. Wow, that is fascinating. They don't know where to go. They right. Don't know what to do. Then the last reason is it's just basic ignorance of the afterlife. They don't. People don't understand that they maintain their consciousness when they die, and they have a choice. They can go to the other side. They don't really need help if they know that they can do it. You see, and, and the majority. I'd say the majority of people that die, they cross over anyway. They don't need help. But there are a segment that do need help because they're in disbelief. They don't understand they're dead. And the classic one is my first chapter in my book called Does God Exist? And that was my best friend, Ken. When I lived in Idaho, we were best of friends. He was an atheist. And I was an evangelist. Right? <laughs> So we, but we were salespeople. We met in a sales meeting. So we just liked each other because we had a lot of things in common. We agreed to disagree and still be friends. So he maintained that there was no God. And I went through this transition from Christianity into metaphysics being a psyche. And all that time I kept sharing with him all the experiences I was experiencing. And he didn't believe any of it. But, you know, we still had coffee and donuts. And we were still good friends. Well, unfortunately, he got cancer and died. And um, several years ago, before I published my book, uh, I got this text from his wife, and he passed away. So the next thing, I'm, all of a sudden, he's in front of me. He's standing in front of me. And he goes, Rich, what's going on here? Who, where am I? And I said, Ken, you never listened to me, did you? 
<laughs> wow, that's amazing. So did you help him find the light or what did you yeah, do with, yeah? yeah? I said, all this energy around you is God, okay? It's, I call him God, the prime creator, you know, creation of everything. I said, those beautiful beings around you are angels and they're here to assist you. He goes, all this time I just thought you were just crazy. <laughs> Well, uh, so I, I'm going to send you back to your family, your soul group, okay? And then after you cross over, you can come back and visit me, because that's what mediums do. They, they connect with the, their loved ones on the other side. So I crossed him over. Now he comes back and visits me. And whenever I feel really down and I'm lonely, I just think of my buddy Ken, and boom, he shows up. What's going on, man? I said, hey, I need some company today. He says, well, let's talk, you know. That's it. So the afterlife is, is really there. It's just for our, you know, if we just understand, we can access it. That's so, right. Uh, a lot of people don't have psychic abilities, so they really struggle with this whole concept. But they're, when their loved ones die, they, I, I always tell them, look, tune into your heart. You know, just feel your feel the presence of your mother or father, or your loved one in your heart. If you can communicate, you'll feel their love. You don't have to be clairvoyant and clair, you know, like I am. Just open up your heart to them, and you'll feel their love come to you. So everybody has that ability. If they'll just take time to, you know, it, it, it's so fun to see people. They come to me and they sit in front of me and I bring their, their mother in or something. I go, now open your heart up and just feel her presence. This is she's there. She's there to love you. Okay. Yeah, I can see her and she's saying all kinds of things to you. If you don't hear her, that's okay. But just know that she's always with you. She's just a thought away. Because in these other dimensions, there's no such thing as time and space. It's all, a, it's all we're all connected, you know, through energy. The energy fields of frequency and all these dimensions are just higher realms of frequency that we go to and we go up there and we evaluate things and we visit our families and then we come to a point where we decide we want to come back and experience this whole thing again and we got to start all over again as a baby go through all this stuff to finally get to a maturity level that but now you see children growing up that are communicating with their loved ones at an early age. Right. And they're not being shunned and, you know, basically told that they're crazy or whatever, which is, I think, a lot of what, you know, our generation grew up with is that there was just such a lack of, of um, openness about these topics that so many people were shut down because we're all born with these abilities, but then they get just kind of, um, you know. I wonder where the children are. You know, they, they understand if you don't shut them down and you let them visit their imaginary friends, what they're really talking to is people in their soul group that just want to be there with them. Right. And, That's you know, and, or maybe they have an ascended master or a guide or, you know, that wants to help them learn things, learn music or learn, you know, art or whatever. It's, so it's very interesting. We're lucky we live in Maui because people are pretty open-minded here. There are other areas of the world where, you know, you'd still be burned at the stake. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm curious for you, Rich. Um, so do you, like, if you're sitting in your chair, do you actually see the vision, like, standing in front of you? Or is it more in your mind's eye? Or how, how does it, how do you experience these souls? Well, usually it's clear audience for me. I hear them. Uh, my angels always come and they'll say, well, my wife can see images. I see, I can see them, but I don't open up my clairvoyance. I keep it closed most of the time because I don't want to see everything around me. I don't get, I don't want to be distracted. So I close that down. And I just, if there's souls that come to me, I can say, okay, what's going on? And they'll say, can you help me? And I'll say, okay, who are you? And then if I feel comfortable, then I'll start opening up my clairvoyance and say, okay, I see who you are. But I'm kind of careful about this. I don't walk around you know, communicating with every single thing that comes my way. Uh, it's too distracting for me. I, I, I pretty much shut it down most of the time. 
because I have other things I want to do. Right, right. You want to be here on the earth while you're here as a human being. Oh my goodness. There's, there's also spirits, the earth spirits, we call them Devic spirits, you know, like fairies and gnomes. I communicate with them too. So that's another realm that uh, is very interesting to get into. And what do they generally want to talk about or what's the, what do you communicate with them about? Uh, restoring the earth, restoring the planet, restoring coral reefs or, or cutting trees down. Like I'm a volunteer gardener at Eel Valley at the Nature Center and I'm always communicating with the, the tree spirits and animal spirits up there. And when animals die, their souls go back and go back in and reincarnate as just like humans. And the trees, they have their own fields of energy, and they go back and reinforce each other. See, everything's, everything's a cosmo of energy field. And rocks have their own cause, you know, if you work right. on the you know all about that. Oh, my gosh. Remember, Rich, when I went, I think it was one of your first uh, gatherings that I, I came here on Maui, and I was at your place, and you had rocks, and we were getting messages oh, yeah. from the rocks. And, oh, my goodness, I had some funny messages. <laughs> yeah, you were pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed you being in that. That was fun. That was fun. Oh, my goodness. It, it, but people need to understand that everything has a field of energy around it. So humans do, animals do, plants do, rocks. We're all, we're all nothing but a, just an energy field of consciousness. That's what we are. Right. So the afterlife is not really, we should understand that there's nothing to fear about the afterlife. That's why I wrote this book. You know, so you can prepare yourself for death. So when it happens, you're not in a state of, what do I do next? Everything's gonna be fine. I just need to go back to my soul group. And then I can decide what I want to do, my, if I want to come back or not. You have a choice. You can change soul groups. You can change ethnic groups. I've done it many times. I've been Japanese, Chinese, Hopi Indian, Hawaiian, European. So here I have a Caucasian male that, if you do my DNA, you know, so I'm from Scotland and Wales area. But here I'm in Hawaii, connecting with Hawaiian souls. But it's, it's all about our past lives. We've been here many times. So there's no room for prejudice. I really have a problem with that. Because, you know, we've all probably been different races in past lives. We're just here to experience what our souls want to experience in this lifetime. That's right. It's, it's, like, That's... it's like my book. It's a collection of stories of our lifetime and that's what our life and this is one chapter in our book and we need to enjoy it and learn from it and ask questions why am i here what am i doing here how can i help other people that's one of the main things we're here for is to help other people through the process of life yes oh my gosh that was one of the things just a week before my husband died he died at age 44 after a seven-year battle with cancer and he said to me, wow, I so regret my life's choice of being an attorney where I was basically pushing numbers around on pieces of paper. I wished I had helped more people while I was here. And I felt like that was such a, just a divinely <laughs> guided message. And it, it really just went straight to my heart because it was seven years later when I was turning 44, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm working at a hedge fund, pushing numbers around on a piece of paper. I need to help more people. So Thus, the reason I quit my job. And then next thing I know, you know, I was doing mediumship work on stages and had a radio show outside New York. And now I'm doing this podcast. And I feel like this is my gift to humanity is to help people not be fearful of death and, and to, you know, share stories like yours. I mean, this is incredible that you've got such access to the other side and that you're helping shine light on death. I think it's beautiful. Well, I think it's important that if we have gifts to share them with other people like you are, and I wish that there were more people that were medium, more people could cross souls over because everywhere I go, I went to Sedona for a couple of weeks, crossed over Geronimo's soul group. Wow. I was in Phoenix and crossed over a whole bunch of Mexican people that had died on the border that were waiting to cross over. I mean, everywhere we go, there's these 
groups of souls that need help, you know. And here in Hawaii, it's been six years of, of just crossing souls over day and night. And, you know, there's still more to come. Isn't there a story you have about, was it going to, was it Kmart or one of the stores here on island where there was a lot of Safeway. souls? Safeway, yeah. Can you tell us that story? Sure. Well, up there in, in Wailuku, um, that Safeway was built on Hawaiian burial ground. And uh, the employees that were working in there would come to work and there would be groceries stacked up. And there were employees being pushed around in the store. So when you say groceries stacked up, you mean like on in the aisles or what do you mean? Yeah. They would wow. Like take a bunch of cereal boxes and just stack them on top of each other or something, you know, just to show them that, you know, there's somebody here. And I walked in there. I, I Somebody told me about this. I said, I got to go over and check this out. I didn't even make it to the store without souls all around me going, hey, 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 can you help me? Can you help me? I said, okay, I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to come back at 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to park in the back of the parking lot. I don't want anybody knowing I'm doing this stuff, okay? So I, my wife and I went in the parking lot at 10 o'clock at night. We're sitting back there with our camera. We got pictures of orbs coming to us that are three feet in diameter. It was incredible. These big blue, I, it's in my book, the pictures. And there were Hawaiian souls. And each group had 200 Hawaiian souls in it. And they were just totally uh, angry. They were really angry. So I, I was talking to them. I said, you know, I'm going to do what we call ho'oponopono. I'm going to be, I'm the bad guy, okay? I'm the guy that owns the corporation, decided to build a, a grocery store on this prime piece of land without even considering the fact that there were Hawaiian souls here. So I'm the, I'm the bad guy. So I went through the process of asking them to forgive me and, you know, I love you, thank you, please forgive me. So we went through that whole process. I said, because when I cross you over, I don't want you angry. I don't want you coming back a bunch of angry Hawaiians, okay? It was a mistake. I'm sorry, okay? You got to learn to let this go because you got another life coming and you're not going to live the same life. So there's no reason to come back with all this negative energy. Remember, you may come back as a European white person in your next lifetime. So you have to understand that this was just a chapter in your book of experience, okay? So they all forgave. They all they went through the process of forgiveness. So then I crossed them all over. And then there was another huge group of Japanese people that came to Peace and had died there. And I was during World War II. There's a lot of them. Um, they weren't killed. They died of natural causes. But, you know, they were really upset on how they had been treated because they had nothing to do with the war. They were just living there. But they died, you know, of old age. So I crossed all of them over. We did a little photo 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 with them, too. So I just want to clear the space for this place. And then I brought up all this unconditional love and filled the store in. And I could tell... People were talking about how things had changed. I went in it the other day, and it was, you know, the energy's fine. There's no, you know. But um, there are what we call natural vortexes, okay? And next door to the Safeway is what we, there's a natural vortex in the earth that souls come and go. And that's quite an interesting place to be, to take pictures at night because you'll see all kinds of, all kinds of stuff. Wow. That's, yeah, we don't, that. <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast. Well, I'm just curious, one more question, and then I want to pull some cards about all this. Um, what about negativity? I know so many people are scared of, you know, dark forces, or, you know, if they open themselves up to this kind of thing, and they're worried about darkness. What, what do you have to say about that? Most darkness is just angry souls that are stuck someplace, okay? Most of them just want help. Now, lots of times, like Maui Meadows was a prime example. There were souls up there that were angry. They were drawing pictures on people's windows and stuff, you know, just trying to get, well, they just wanted to know, they want everybody to know that this was their place, okay? And how come you built this house on my property? 
So I went in and explained to him that, you know, we love you very much, but your time's over with, you need to go, okay? And we're gonna send you back to your soul group and then you can come back and reincarnate. Once they understand, so people need to understand that if there's poor guys in their house, there's something going on, there's a soul that needs help. Most of the time they're not there to hurt you. They want you to acknowledge them and, and try to understand, you know, and sometimes it takes a medium to go in and communicate with them. Like up in Lahaina, there was a store I went into where they literally knocked over display cases. Wow. So angry. And I went in there and, and crossed them over so the store owner could get back to business. Fascinating. It's so, and I, it makes sense, right? I mean, especially if a lot of these people don't even know they're dead and then they're just looking around and, you know, and then they have all this anger and angst about what's happening on their property. Yeah, they don't understand that why are people coming into their premises doing, and they can't communicate with them, see? So it's kind of like there are all these people moving into your house and they don't say anything to you. <laughs> right? They just move in and lay down on your bed and go to sleep at night and you're standing there, what are you doing in my house? And that's what happens. And that's why they get so confused. So it's not that they're bad people, they're just really confused. Wow, that is fascinating. Yeah, and I go into places where people have all this stuff going on and within five or 10 minutes, they're all, you know, we calmed it down. Sometimes it takes a little work on my behalf to get them to calm down because they've been angry for so long. Right, and right. Maybe the people that live there, they, you know, they say things to them, they swear out, don't do that, you know? They just yeah, that's them. not helping. That's just adding yeah. fuel to the fire, right? Right. Oh my goodness. Well, let me pull some cards. I'm just fascinated. And um, I would love to see what spirit has to say about, um, about all of this. So let me see. Yeah. So this is great. Oh my gosh. Well, this, it, it's really so much um, for you. I mean, so the first card is wisdom, which is the blockage card. And so for me, what I see in your life, you know, is that originally, I mean, like you said, we're on a journey and you are opening up throughout your lifetime as we all are. Every single day is another step in our awakening and our opening. And so, you know, even though you had wisdom about religiosity and, and your fundamentalist Christian upbringing, you know, that just was one step. And then you, you had more and more wisdom. So um, what, then your action card is passion. And I feel like that's what this has really opened up for you is that it's just completely, you know, you were just immersed in it and just so intrigued. And then the more that you, you know, dove into it, the more that's been revealed to you, which is just fascinating. Again, I love your stories. I could listen to you all day and your outcome, which is <laughs> amazing is opening because that's what you do. You create these openings so that these souls are able to cross over and you're bringing such peace and, and harmony to the, especially right now here in Hawaii where you work. And I just want to commend you for doing all this work. I mean, the soul the energy and uh, universe God um, is just like they're showing me like a standing ovation right now because they're just so happy um, the work that you're doing and, and what you're, you're helping um, really bring more peace to this, to this world, which is what we all want to see. Well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Encouragement once in a while. <laughs> That's right. I know. Right. It can kind of be lonely sometimes doing this work. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah. People say, well, how'd your day go? I said, well, I talked to a lot of dead people today. Yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> and then people start backing away and saying, okay, great. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Do you get that sometimes? Are people just like, oh my God, you're crazy or anything overt like that? Or is it more just? Not as, not as much as I used to. I, 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 I'm very sensitive as to what I share with people. Right. You know, I don't go around telling everybody I'm spiritual meeting like a talk to the dead i mean i don't do that I, I let people open the door and then i i'll i'll put a little you know feeder out and see what they say and then you know say well have you ever come close to dying and they'll say oh you know i had this experience would you share it with me and then i'll tell them about your 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 our group and i'll say come to come to our meeting yeah you know you're not going to be judged 
I met a guy at a coffee shop this morning. He was telling me about his near-death experience. Oh my he gosh. To come. I said, you know, you need to come and share your experience with me. You're in a place where you can be welcome with this experience because it was for a reason. Right. You open up your understanding about who you are in the afterlife, and then you can share that with someone else. Because yeah. It, they're valuable experiences. This near-death experience stuff is what changes people. Just just like what you've had, and you, it took you a while to work through it to finally get to a place where you're willing to say, you know what, I really need to share this. And look at what you've done to help people. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it is amazing because really for me, it was joining the IAMS group here on Maui that started putting all the puzzle pieces together for me. Because again, I thought it was just some kind of random weird experience, although it, I knew it changed my life, but I didn't quite know how to talk about it or, or even put it into context of my physical 3D life here. And so, you know, meeting you here on the island, again, I think Maui is such a beautiful, heart opening place to live because there's so much um, acceptance and like-mindedness of people here that are open and willing to support us on our journey of, of this kind of, again, in normal society, kind of weird <laughs> experiences. So yeah, I, if anybody here on Maui, you know, please come to our IANS group. We're now meeting the first Tuesday of each month at Trinity Church by the Sea. And for those of you listening that aren't in Maui, please find an IANS group near you. They've also now got online groups that you can join. Any, any place, um, well, these IAM groups are a, a safe place to share and listen to other people's stories and to help pr start putting context for people that don't know where else to go. And it also helps you, people that have uh, gifts. Yes. They know they have gifts. And they'll meet somebody next to them and says, well, I can hear people talk or I can see things. And they'll say, you know, I can hear people say things too. Well, well let's get together and let's discover what your gifts are. That's right. And most people that have had near-death experiences or spiritually transformative experiences, they come back with gifts. And a lot of times they don't know what to do with them or how to operate them. And <laughs> so it's such... Had them, they had them before they had the experience. Well, that's true. It's just opened the door. But now they've figured it out. That they, that's right. You know, wow, this is an incredible opportunity for me to learn. Exactly. Well, this is... This has been fantastic. So tell people how they can reach you. I, of course, will have links below um, on my website, but, but tell us uh, how they can get a hold of you. Well, I have a website called exploringsubtleenergy.com. So you can go to that. Um, and then my books are uh, available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So if you want to go ahead and pick up a copy. Uh, and then my email, I'm a, in the, I advertise in Maui Vision. So okay. I want to find out more about, I always write an article, and I know you do too. And so you can go to that magazine and you can go back to my website. You can read some of my uh, stories I've written. I always write a story every, to the magazine. And not all, <laughs> most of the time, it's not about the afterlife. It's just whatever subject that they ask us. You know, you've done it many times as well. Right, right. Well, fantastic. This has been such a great conversation, Rich. I so appreciate your time, and I look forward to seeing you at next month IAN's meeting. Uh, let's see. That's going to be the first week in February? Yes, February 4th. I will be in Tucson Gem Show. Oh, okay. Well, then everybody that's listening in, check out, look for Rich at the Gem Show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Exploring Death podcast. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any financial or legal decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Exploring Death. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.